Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We just finished up talking about the major controversy that took place in the MLB with Shohei Otani and his interpreter. Now we are going to be getting a little bit more on the light side of things, light side of things here with Kevin Durant becoming the NBA's eighth all-time leading scorer. He passed Shaquille O'Neal last night as he dropped 22 in the Suns win against the 76ers and he continues to climb in the all-time ranks. Now I just wanted to sort of talk about Kevin Durant and his legacy in this segment where I do feel like Durant is someone who has almost been I'm definitely not going to say he's underrated. We all understand he's a Hall of Fame player. He's one of the greatest scorers of all time. But I do feel like even still, there's so much discredit that is associated with him because of the... I think it specifically stems from, of course, joining the Golden State Warriors after the Thunder blew a 3-1 lead to them. This was the year, of course, as well. The Warriors won 73 games, and they blow the lead to them. He joins them the next offseason, and they they will ultimately... He... Sorry, I, I was reading the comment here, which we do have from a YouTuber here saying... Hearing from Japan, there are concerns that Otani will be made an accomplice and receive a lifetime ban for trying to help um, Mitsuhara. What is the coverage like in the U.S.? Well, first off, welcome here. That's awesome to see that we have viewers from all over the place. The coverage here is that Mitsuhara is being the main person that is being blamed in all of this. It's being reported as a, quote, massive theft so it sounds like Otani was blindsided. That's at least what we're hearing in America, where it was Tisha Thompson of ESPN said from what she has heard from a handful of people that Otani was blindsided in this affair. Now, it is interesting that Mitsuhara had went back on his word, initially saying that Otani knew about some of it, but then Ultimately, the second time he spoke to Thompson, he had said that he lied about that initially and that Otani had no idea whatsoever. So, is very interesting, you know, because there's a chance here. Mitsuhara clearly got himself into a situation that was damaging for himself. $4.5 million in debt is what's being said, or at least that's how much money was stolen from Otani's account. So there are absolutely people who are theorizing this could have been an accomplice situation with Otani, but it's really tough here to speculate that. I think that at least I myself um, and a lot of people that are speaking on this situation don't want to accuse of Otani of anything that is damaging to his personality and his character because of, I mean, really the international hero that Otani is, and yeah, he's just the baseball player, but the way that he is so good at what he does, he connects, in my opinion, at least connects people from overseas, that relationship, and going to be interesting to see as we get more details, and we will continue to keep you all updated. Thank you very much for the the comment, and... Moving on here, feel free to ask any follow-ups as well. But with Kevin Durant here, again, talking about the fact that he is one of the, in my opinion, a little bit discredited stars of his generation. And again, not that anybody denies the talent with him, but the fact that he joined the Warriors I really do think did a damage to his legacy that is never fully going to be moved on from and the reality of the situation is there is a real possibility that he could have won a championship without the Warriors but he hasn't up to this point and unless Phoenix really finds a way to pull themselves together probably within these next two years Durant is going to be without being a 
alpha on a championship winning team. And not that I want to close the door on him necessarily, but with the injuries we've seen as he gets there up gets up there in age, it is a very difficult so, sort of world to picture that he is going to be able to be a and I'm not saying he can't ever be a finals MVP again, but at this point in his mid 30s, it becomes more and more unrealistic by the day quite literally. And I don't believe that he's necessarily in a position this season that is going to win the win the NBA championship. He's in his age 35 season here. You have to imagine with a handful of the injuries that he suffered over the course of his career that, you know, 40 is probably what we're looking at in terms of when he would possibly retire altogether. But, you know, how late can he play until being a finals MVP type player? And I definitely myself don't want to discredit him as I'm sort of trying to defend him here. But the reality of the situation is he went to the best possible basketball situation when he joined the Warriors, which everybody rips him for, fair or unfair. And then he left that amazing situation for himself to move on to a Brooklyn team pairing up with Kyrie Irving, who at that time, at least, I mean, we're seeing the you know most consistent version of Kyrie. It's crazy. He's at something like... 18 19 consecutive games played which is the longest streak that he's had since 2016 seven years ago and paired up with him and james harden who of course had just basically went on a an athletic strike to get out of his houston situation these are the people who he paired himself with and the, even still he was you know half a half an inch of a shoe from being able to potentially advance to the NBA finals in that season and they were dealing with injuries to Kyrie and Harden during the playoffs there so the Brooklyn situation was just an absolute mess and now in Phoenix I do believe that there's plenty of talent there he's much more saddled to some reliable players in Devin Booker Brad Beal I wouldn't consider to be the ultimate reliable, but personality-wise, you know he's at least bought in. Injuries have been a story of Brad Beal, but he's at least with two other elite shot creators and can potentially make it work there. It just, they are so top-heavy right now, which is a real issue. They don't have a true point guard, which I know, as much as I've talked about at times, the fact that Booker can be a very talented playmaker at times, but to ask him to be a full-time point guard is a little bit of a big ask for him. And I just, I think that the Western Conference is extremely tough. We have this next generation of stars that are coming up, like SGA and Anthony Edwards and Tyrese Halliburton, all of these players. It is very interesting in the it is very interesting to see this window can't be that wide open for Kevin Durant ultimately his legacy is just about written anyways but I also just sort of wanted to talk about the fact that I don't think he necessarily gets the le level of credit he deserves and when he does retire likely with those being his only two championships I don't want to be sitting here in 20 years talking about how he just hopped on a bandwagon to become a champion because while he did a little bit hop on a bandwagon he was also the best player in every one of those series that he participated in he outperformed LeBron James he hit the shot over him multiple times and I think that that goes a little bit under the radar when it comes to Durant's legacy as a whole and I, even though I probably haven't done the most convincing job over this segment of defending him, I do think that he's one of the best basketball players I personally have ever seen in my life. He has to be top two in his generation, him and LeBron James. I do believe that he is better than Curry all time as well. Not that, gotta dive into 
that specific debate necessarily, but it is very... I'm, I'm just curious how his career is going to progress, progress over time. Um, we have another comment from... I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but Jal, we'll call it that, on YouTube, saying that very few people in Japan know about March Madness. That is a bit of a surprise, but I also, I'm just not sure necessarily, there's not the star power necessarily in March Madness, I feel like that would reach across borders like we have in a player, and of course Shohei Otani also played himself in Japan, so it he had some first-hand exposure himself playing overseas, but I don't think that there's really that same level, and I would be really interested to see. I think that in China, we're seeing necessarily across the MB the globe as a whole, we're seeing more and more global expansion with a lot of these primetime athletes. I think the NBA is a perfect example of that where you look and the best players in the league are at least the up and coming generation are all international players and I wasn't around to experience Yao Ming necessarily but he was somebody who really was a uniter in terms of American and Chinese basketball fans and we've seen that this with a couple different people in Greece with Giannis in I believe Jokic is Serbian talking about that as well and you know I'm I'm curious whether or not we can get to a point where we see a little bit more of an expansion with college athletics overseas because colleges also college athletics also for almost the level of cult fandom that comes with it is I feel like can be a difficult thing to translate across all cultures that might not have the same level of fandom for essentially I know that they now get paid but it's essentially it's not professional sports but it's a close I don't, I don't I don't know necessarily how to fully describe what state of athletics college basketball and college sports in general is now but um I'm curious to see where it goes from here, but we are going to be taking our final break, and when we come back on the other side, I'm going to be giving my final four and talking about some of the best matchups from the round of 64 coming up, so stick with us, and we will be right back. 